July 21st, 2008, um, 27 Fox Company was forward deployed in Helmand Province. They were one of the first units back in the area. They were in a convoy and he was in the back of a seven ton truck that hit an anti-tank mine. It knocked him unconscious and later on in the day they were taking indirect fire and they had dismounted out of the truck and one of the other Marines stepped on a large IED, which is an improvised explosive device that detonated. And Matt was about 10 or 15 feet away from that. Again, it knocked him unconscious. People from the very get-go could see that he was different coming back from Afghanistan. One of his very good friends died in Afghanistan that day, and so he was a little bit depressed, and so people just kind of chalked it up to that. And at the time, we just thought he was lucky not to lose any arms or legs. We just figured, you know, by the grace of God, he had walked away, and then come to find out after the seizure started that he actually had a small bleed in his brain. He had had significant brain damage done, and basically one side of his brain is just not functioning anymore because of it. After the seizures, he didn't know what had happened. He didn't remember Iraq or Afghanistan or his childhood. He didn't remember me. He couldn't go back to work. He couldn't drive. He couldn't dress himself. He couldn't feed himself. He couldn't be at home alone because he would get confused and potentially hurt himself. When you find yourself as a caregiver in those first couple of hours where your life has just been blown apart, you start asking all these ridiculous questions like, oh my God, who's gonna mow the grass? Who's gonna do the shopping on Tuesdays? Who's gonna pick up the kids from school? Who's gonna feed the cat? Who's gonna do this? Who's gonna do that? How am I gonna get this done? Because you've now just gone from a two-person team to a one-person team. I also am in the military. Uh, I just came off active duty. I'm a nurse for the Army. After he got injured, I had to switch over to the reserves because I just couldn't, I couldn't do both. Caregiving is not like a Monday through Friday, eight to five kind of deal. It's two in the morning, three in the morning, two in the afternoon, it's whenever he needs me. And with brain injuries, you just never know what's gonna happen. I think it wasn't until I actually started talking with other spouses who were in similar situations where I was like, oh yeah, like I am a caregiver. Like that is what I'm doing. You know, like putting a name to it kind of changes the role. I mean, you're always doing those things, you know, helping him get dressed, helping him, you know, eat, helping him get in the shower, you know, all those kinds of things. I was doing those things from the very beginning. You just don't put a name to it. And I think it's because people don't talk about it that you forget that there is actually a name for it, that you're a caregiver. I think it's very difficult to get access to the resources you need, mostly because you just don't know where to look. There are so many charities out there who are looking for ways to help, and I think that that's one way that the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and the fellows have really tried to help is by making those connections, by putting it out on the website to say, hey, we have a veteran who needs this, and then watching all these people with other resources kind of connect together to say, this is where we can help you, this is who we can put you in contact with. Now, I wish I would have known about this earlier because I didn't know when he was in the hospital, I had no idea that there was a group of people who existed out there who dealt just with caregivers. And it was just, it was like everything that I had been looking for. I am a military caregiver.